What's going on, everybody? My name is LB The Realist. This is Surrealistic Studios, Surreal News, Surreal at Night, where the realists are real. This uh, segment is going to be short and sweet. I just wanted to talk to you guys about ah, what it's like being a, a young uh, married-in grandfather. So I'm a grandfather for those of you guys that don't know. Um, my granddaughter just turned one years old. Uh, it is officially the 14th, but she turned one yesterday, officially on the 13th. So August 13th of 2021, um, 2020, she was born. Um, now today, one year from now, you know, she's one years old or one year from then she's one years old. Actually, today is uh, the memorial of my play brother, the one that I've known pretty much all my life, the one that died in a, tra a, tra a trucking accident, uh, 18 Wheeler. He actually passed on this day. So my granddaughter was born on August 13th. And then the very next day we found out that my big bro died. So, you know, rest in peace, my big bro. Leger, Lafayette, Norwood, I love you, bro. I miss you. Everybody does, bro. But um, my granddaughter was actually born the day before he died. So I got a, a ton of joy and then a ton of despair right after, you know. But it that's just life, you know. I And then, of course, you, you know, my grandmother died earlier this year from COVID-19. So... It's been a, an emotional roller coaster for me, you guys. I mean, I know you guys are dealing with some stuff, too. I know you guys have dealt with some stuff. You know, I'm not trying to make this a pity party or anything like that, but it just, I'm just, I'm highlighting the point that I feel as though in my life, I don't have any time to slow down. I don't have any time to break down because, you know, the birth of my granddaughter and then the death of my bro and then the death of my grandmother. It, it it was like a big life lesson. It's like teaching me that you can't you can't really slow down for too long because as soon as you slow down, the next big thing is happening. You know, you can't really slow down to just breathe and or to grieve or to break down because as you're doing that, other people that are still here are, are watching you. They need you. Other people that are coming into this life as as so many of our loved ones are leaving. And I even see, you know, my wife, she's losing so many people, so many family members, you know, from gun violence to illnesses to accidents. It's been really rough on my wife as well. Um, not to mention that my play bro is actually her real cousin, the one that died in a trucking accident. So it's been really rough. It's been incredibly rough. But again, you know, with the birth of my granddaughter, it's just like you, you you have to really appreciate what life is. You know, it, it could be horrible. And, you know, at the same time, it could be the most beautiful thing that there is. You know, and I experienced that today watching my granddaughter at um, we went to Chuck E. Cheese's today. We went to Chuck E. Cheese. She, she saw, you know, Chuck E. Cheese, the big rat. <laughs> And she's so brave. She's incredibly brave. I mean, the first time I saw the big rat, I cried. <laughs> I cried. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, this is a big rat. Y'all got me over here with this big rat. <laughs> I wasn't feeling it. I was feeling that Chuck E. Cheese pizza, though. I had some today, man. It's nothing like that Chuck E. Cheese pizza, let me tell you. I don't know why, but I don't know. It brought up a lot of memories today, and it was cool. I got to see her go into the... um the ticket blaster booth or whatever. It's like this booth, plastic booth they put you in. They close the door and then they blow tickets all up at you and you just got to grab them. My wife went in with Isla, the baby, and um, <laughs> she was just trying to play with her glasses the whole time. But my wife ended up grabbing some um, some tickets. So, you know, she likes those points. <laughs> so um, it was really cool. We all sung happy birthday. Um, uh, my son was there. My wife, a couple other friends were there. They brought their kid there. Um, it was a really cool time. We spent like two hours there. Then I had to get get back home so I can get get ready for work or whatever. My wife stayed back. Um, she actually dropped me off or I drove to the house and she drove her car back or whatever. But we had a great day. We had a very great day. My granddaughter is one years old. It's been one year that I've been a grandfather. 
you know um it's been a couple months since i've been married we got married on may 31st um well june july august it's the third month now on august 31st uh, 31st is there august 31st i'm not sure but at the end of the month it'll be three months so that's going on i mean so many life changes are happening to me in these last few years it's really incredible it's really incredible and i can't do anything but just run with the punches and just keep progressing forward i'm still working on my real estate i actually got a chapter done tonight so you guys wish me luck on that i'm trying to be a real estate agent um and still withhold my own views and 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 hold on to a piece of myself you know because i understand that being a real estate agent is it's like i have to play the capitalism game while we're still retaining myself you know and i i believe it's possible i don't think it's impossible you know it's just it very much is a capitalism game it's about how much you can acquire you know yeah we've all played monopoly it's about how much you can acquire and, and how much little you pay out how much money you keep and how much property you have you know so i i really do want to own property one day because that's something that's so missing in the black community I, like that's one of the things that we talk about or that i talk about uh more specifically as, as far as reparations goes it's not just a, a blank check to every american descendant of slave it's actually more to it than that it's actually attacking the generational wealth gap the wealth gap is actually attacking the fact that black people most black people don't have assets we don't own property we don't we have liabilities we have bills we don't own assets we don't have properties we don't have things that we pass off to generation to generation so that our our kids have something and so that their kids have something we don't have that kind of stuff some black people do i'm not saying all black people are a monolith and we're just all poor but most of us don't and it happened because the stuff that we did have back in the day was demolished we were bombed it was straight up stolen from us so all of the chances that we had to build wealth in this country are gone. Everything was gone, you know? Like my dad, you know, uh, he, he did his best for his kids, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of the stuff that I'm realizing, he's now realizing. You know, my mom, she did her very best, but, you know, she was unable to provide assets for her kids, you know, because she didn't have a means to get those things. It's so out of the reach it's so out of our reach you know it's it's almost i mean look at owning a home especially in california like it's so out of everyone's reach at this point home prices are through the roof you know and even if you had the money like you still need the credit i'm working on my credit right now you know i just paid off most of my collections that i had on my credit because it, in order for my credit to move up to where it needs to be so that I can finally buy a house for my family and, and start creating generational wealth, my credit has to be up to par. And because of COVID and everything that's going on with that, your credit score had to be more than what it, what it used to be. You used to be able to get an FHA loan, which is a government-backed loan, with like a 580 credit score. And I heard that that's not even the case anymore. Like it has to be more like a 620, 640 now because they, they raised the... Um, they raised the, uh, the what you call it the, uh, I forget I, I don't know what, I don't know how do you explain it but the threshold they raised the threshold because there's more liability now of people being able to repack, uh, repay back their loans so it's just more difficult the American dream now lives in Canada I was just talking to one of my Canadian um, uh, supporters and. I, I was like, hey, how's the weather in Canada, eh? <laughs> because the, I heard the American dream lives out there now. You know, these are the things that I'm thinking about. You know, these are the things that are on my heart, you know, building generational wealth, not just for me, but for my family, my new family. You know, be, being able to buy my mother a house one day, something that I was unable to do for my grandmother before she left us. You know, things that we need in this life to carry us on through generations is, is something that are not re readily available uh, uh, to black people, you know? So this is one of the things that we have to attack and, and we have to acknowledge when we talk about reparations. I know I kind of went off on a tangent there, but my point to all of that is just to say that with my granddaughter here, you know, with all the, the tragedies in my family, you know, with everything that I'm trying to accomplish, 
you know, it. it's tough, but it is what it is. And the only thing that I can do now to keep my mind focused and to keep my heart from sinking into my stomach is to just stay busy, keep making videos, you know, keep doing my real estate courses, take a step by step so that one day I'll be able to escape the situation that I'm in, you know? Um, I have to provide these things, not only for myself, but for my family. You know, I, we got a baby. I got a, a, a son that's about to turn 20 in January. You know, something's gotta give. Something's gotta give, folks. So, if you guys see me taking, you know, a little little bit of time away from creating the videos, it's because I'm taking care of my granddaughter. It's because I'm studying my real estate courses, it's because I'm trying so desperately to create a better way, not only for myself, but for my family and for generations to come. Um, that's what it is, folks. Uh, I love being a grandfather. I think I'm probably like one of the best looking grandfathers <laughs> that you'll ever see. You know, I'm whatever, to my own heart. But whatever. But anyways, it is a pleasure. It is very much a pleasure. You guys have seen, most of you guys have seen my granddaughter. She's so cute. And she's learning so much. She's walking now. So she's getting, she's getting around everywhere in the apartment. I really got to watch her. Um, she's really tough too. Like she'll mess, she'll fall, like hit her head on the, on the uh, little on the couch or like one of her toys or something and she'll just like she'll do like a mm, do make like a face and then she'll just get right back up <laughs> she's so tough and she's so tough um like i said she didn't even cry when she saw chuck e cheese today or when she got into the uh machine that blows all the tickets and another kid got in he cried and he couldn't take it he wanted to get out he was like uh-uh let me out <laughs> we're like it's okay it's okay watch you're gonna have fun you're gonna have fun that thing went on and he was, it was, he was done. He was done. She went in there. She didn't, she was more focused on my wife's glasses or the glasses that they give you when you go into the machine. So you don't get, you know, paper in your eyes. She was more focused on trying to grab those out of my wife's hand than she was at anything flying around her. So, um, I think it's really cool that, you know, um, I'm a grandfather. I got the benefit of having a son. I got him at the teenage years though. And now um, it's like I have a daughter, but I get to rewind and <laughs> be kind, rewind all the way back to the baby years. And this is my first baby experience, y'all. I mean, I've, I kind of had a little bit of experience with my baby sister, Zaria, but not too much. With her, I kind of really, I stayed distant because, you know, she wasn't my baby, you know, and I just, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't around babies like that, so I didn't know how to act or how to talk baby to a baby or how to carry myself around a bit. You know, I had to learn these things. And with um, with Isla, my granddaughter, I got to relearn all these things over again. And with her, it's different. You know, I don't try to avoid her. I'm older, I'm wiser, I'm more mature. But with her, it's actually, it's more of a pleasure, you know, because I get to take care of her and look after her and really, I get to feel what it's like to be you know, not only a grandfather, but a father, you know, something that I'd never had experience with before and something that I miss with my son because I, I started dating his mom when he was like 15, you know, so I already, I got the moody teenager years, right, right from 15 up until now, you know, and now he's learning how to be a man and, you know, I, I, I try my best to, you know, help him out with that and try to, um, you know, steer him in the right direction and, and you know, give him the right pieces of knowledge but you know he's at that age where he's going to make his own decisions there's nothing that I can really I can't force him to do anything you know he has to make those decisions for himself so I do my best to just try to put things in his ear and to just give him hints and say hey you know you should do this give him suggestions so um that was it folks I said every time I say here here's a good rule of thumb folks if I say hey this is going to be a short video it's not going to be a short video. <laughs> just just know that for future reference, all right? If I ever say, hey, this is going to be a quick one, it's going to be a quick one. 
it's not going to be a quick one. Just count on that and then we'll all be all right. So I'm hoping you guys are good. Um, if you're not good, I sincerely hope that you will do better in the future. I'm sincerely uh, sending you love, peace, and light your way. Um, because life is too short, folks. We got to do what we can to enjoy ourselves before it's all before it's all said and done. I mean, honestly, we got climate change raging. It's the world, half the world's on fire. The other half is underwater. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then it's like, we, we just keep killing each other. And we need a lot more love and peace and light in the world, folks. That's why I say love, peace, and light. Do some kind, rewind. You get it? Do some kind, rewind the video. You know, rewind the video, love, peace, and light. That's what it's all about. You know, do some kind, rewind. You know what I'm saying? Like, take it back a step and put positivity into the universe. And then, and in turn, positivity will come back to you. That's how I view things anyways. Do good things and good things happen. That's what Earl, uh, Earl Hickey says. So with all that being said, folks, um, all my information will be down below. And until next time, until the next video, I'm out. Peace. Happy birthday, Isla. Love you.